Next up we take a look at how to add PlayStation 1 games to your PSP and unfortunately it's not as simple as tracking files to correct folders. So we need to download utility called PSX to PSP and with that we can turn PS1 backup files to eboot files that can run on PSP. It's still pretty simple thing to do, so go ahead and download the PSX to PSP. And once again, there is a download link down below in the description. Obviously, it does not matter where you get the PS1 backup files, but if you are on Windows, backing up your own PS1 games from disk is easy to do, and there are tons of tools to do it, but I guess Image Burn is one of the top choices for people, and it's pretty much as simple as a having a disk drive, putting in the PS1 disk and from image burn menu choose create image file from disk and then choose destination folder you want files to end up in. Okay, after you have downloaded PSX to PSP, go ahead and launch it and first thing you will be asked is classic or theme mode. Now this does not really matter at all, but this tutorial will be in classic mode. First open options menu and in here I would not really change anything. We have a compression level slider here which by default is at 9, so file sizes are actually compressed as we convert them. There may be some cases where you need to adjust this if you have issues with the game, but I would just keep it at 9 unless you encounter issues with some games. From the options menu you can also change default folders for games and output files if you want to do that, but this can also be chosen with each game conversion as we go. Okay, so I have two classic games here as an example and I chose uh, Tomb Raider, one of my favorite PS1 games, and Resident Evil 2, which is also one of my favorites. Now, uh, Resident Evil 2 is a multi-disc game, so with these two games I can show you also when we have a game with more than one disc. Alright, so now we're going to talk about how to uh, use PSX to PSP. So first, we're going to choose the file we want to convert. And in, in this case, for me, it's going to be the Tomb Raider backup I made. So I'm going to locate the file on my computer. And I'm going to choose a Tomb Raider.bin file that I have backed up myself. And it automatically fills in most of the details here. So... Uh, I can just choose the game title. I'm gonna actually change. This is a greatest hits copy, but I'm just gonna change it to be Tomb Raider in the PSP menus. So here we can choose all kinds of icons and background images and everything. Uh, and these will determine how the, how it's gonna look inside the PSP menus. And we can take a look at the preview here. So that's really nice. And these are photos that I created myself from the uh, covers of the of the game. All right, now output PPP folder. This is where the file will end up. So this can be whatever you want it to be, but I just uh, I just put it to the uh, desktop. All right, so when you are ready, when you have filled all the details in, you can just go ahead and press convert, and that's gonna do all the work for you. And you can see here I have the folder, and inside the folder will be the uh, eboot. So it, it always needs to be one folder, and inside that needs to be the eboot. Okay, now we talk about if you have a game with more than one disc. In that situation, first you choose the uh, disc 1 here, just like we did with the Tomb Raider. So I'm going to go to my Resident Evil 2 disc 1, uh, which is the Leon disc. And by the way, it's always recommended uh, that you use the, the lower uh, game ID game first if you have multiple discs. So, for example, the disc 1 may be, in this case, it's SLUS00421. And the second disc is going to be SLUS. 00592 so i'm gonna choose that that as a second option and if you have a game with more than two discs you would obviously just go ahead and continue here but with resident evil 2 i just put these two a uh, disc here uh, you can see we got the game id and the game main game id these are going to be different between the discs you can see the game id is different between two discs but the main game id uh from what I from what I've heard is that you should keep it the the lowest one should be the the main game ID. If you have issues with the, with something, you can always try to change this. But for the most part, it should be fine. And uh, once again, you choose the output PPP folder. For me, it's desktop, and I have already created this, so I'm not going to convert it in this video. But you can see I have Resident Evil 2, and inside that will be eboot file. And once again, you can choose your art for these games. And I have, once again, I created these art icons from my 
I just took a photo of the Resident Evil 2 uh, game cover uh, from the front and back, and that's how I created these little icons here. So, but if you don't, uh, if you don't put any uh, icons here, it's fine. It's fine. It's it's gonna work just the same, but it's not gonna have any art in the PSP menu. All right, then we can just connect our PSP and transfer these files to the PSP. Okay, so we just copy the folders that have eboot file inside and from the memory card go to PSP and then inside game folder is where we paste them. Wait for transfer to complete and with that they should appear in your PSP menu. Now we are ready to play some PlayStation 1 classics, so let's take a look. Now we have our PlayStation 1 classics ready to play on our PSP, which is fantastic. And as you can see, they appear in the menus with art and background images that I chose when using the PSX to PSP. Okay, let's try to play some PlayStation 1 here and take a look at a couple options available for you. And also with Resident Evil 2, I have to show you one setting that allows game to even run. Otherwise, it will freeze every time in the loading screen. And also, we will discuss changing the disc when the game has a multiple disc like Resident Evil 2. So once you get in-game by pressing PlayStation button or Home button for earlier models of PSP, you can change some settings, for example screen modes from full screen to original resolution or even custom. I like to use normal screen mode because it fills the screen, but it's still 4x3 aspect ratio, which is the only correct aspect ratio when playing PS1, right? Tomb Raider is such a classic, one of my all-time favorite games for sure, and it plays great here on PSP. Okay, so with Tomb Raider, everything just works and runs like it should without changing anything, and that's true for most games, but there can be situations where a game has issues, for example, launching or freezing, so I guess it was good for this video that I actually had issues getting Resident Evil 2 to work, and when I researched online, it seems like many people in the past before me had issues with that too. Now to fix this freezing issue with Resident Evil 2 specifically can be done by changing the disk load speed option to fast from the settings. It actually fixed the issue for me and now this game works correctly, so that can be a solution sometimes if you have an issue with game freezing. So there you have it. That's how you can revisit some of your favorite PS1 classics on your PSP or even discover some PlayStation 1 games for the first time. Awesome. Alright, so the last thing I'm going to talk about when it comes to PlayStation 1 is changing the discs. So if you have a game with multiple discs, like we have in this example, Resident Evil 2 has two discs. So if you want to change the disc, you can access the, uh, the disc changing menu by pressing the PlayStation button. But keep in mind this, unless the game prompts you to change the disc, you can't do it on the fly. So if you play a game and at some point the game prompts you to change the disc, that's when you can do it, but when it comes to uh, games like Resident Evil 2, that you can actually choose which disc you want to start with. So you got the Claire disc and uh, Leon disc. So, so in Resident Evil 2's case, if you want to start with the disc 2, the Claire disc, you can reset the game and choose disc 2 and that will allow you to do that. But otherwise, the disc changing can only be done when the game prompts you to do that. 